Welcome to the Daily Tanya. Today is Sunday, the seventh day of Adar Beis, the second Adar. And today is a special day. It is the birthday and the yard site of Moshe Rabbeinu and Moses. So happy birthday, Moses. And of course, Moses is every single Jew. There is, it says in the Zohar, there is a spark and a shum part of Moshe Rabbeinu in each and every one of us. In fact, a week from today, we're going to celebrate Purim. The holiday of Purim is connected with the fact, the miracle is connected with the fact that Moshe Rabbeinu's birthday is in this month. That entire month, it turns into a happy month. And, and that is because Moshe Rabbeinu has the ability to elevate us and to lift us up. And uh, today we begin a new chapter, chapter 36, which talks about the very essence of the Hasidic philosophy that talks about the purpose of the creation. Why are we here for? Let's begin with Tzedakah first. Tzedakah brings Mashiach closer, which the coming of Mashiach, of course, will be the ultimate uh, culmination of the entire creation. So why was the world created? And there is different answers that is given to it. Hashem wanted to show his greatness, to reveal himself. The Alter Rebbe talks about the explanation that is given in the Medrash that says Hashem desired to have an abode, a dwelling place in the lowest, betachtoinim, in the lowest place, in the lowest world. So this goes, what does that mean? Hashem desire to have, to have a place, to have a dwelling place. A dwelling place is a place where you, like your home, you reveal, your very essence is revealed completely. You're not in hiding. You're not concealing yourself. Hashem wants to be revealed in the lowest world. So now the Alter Rebbe is going to explain. First of all, he's going to explain what does it mean, lower world and higher worlds. What makes the world lower make and, and higher? And he explains that the idea... As far as God is concerned, there's no such thing higher and lower. Because God's existence is everywhere equally. The question is, how much of him is revealed? The more he is revealed, that makes the world a higher world from our perspective. So if you have the world of angels, spiritual worlds, godliness is there more revealed. In a world like our world, we live in a physical, material world, a corporal world, where godliness is completely concealed. That's exactly where God wants to have the home. And this explains what we discussed last chapter. We asked, what is the purpose? Why are we here? Why are we um, struggling and never finding an end to the struggles with our material being. And we said that, yes, well, we can connect to God through our physical body, but we can also connect to a spiritual self. We can connect to God through meditation and connecting and love and developing understanding and holiness and godliness. That also connects your spiritual soul to God. Why is it necessary to connect uh, we we'll do physical mitzvahs, commandments that is seem very, very technical. You take a lulav and you shake a lulav. What's the what's the idea behind it? And the same thing every other material physical mitzvah. And that's what Alter Rebbe will explain. That this is the desire of Hashem. Ultimately, the Alter Rebbe says, when it comes to a desire, there is no questions why. Why do you desire something? I desire. Hashem has this desire to have a place where he's concealed completely 
like in this physical world. And here we should find him. Here we should, he should be revealed. We should have awareness of God and we should connect the physical world to God. Ultimately that will happen when Mashiach will come. So let's see inside chapter 36 in the Tanya. Says the Alter Rebbe. Vehine, meidah zo ismai marazal she tachlis briyes oilam azehu she nisavo akodesh baruchu liyes lo idira betachtayim. In a well-known statement, our rabbis declare that the purpose for which this world was created is that the Holy One, blessed be He, desired to have an abode in the lowest, the lower realms. This comes from Medrash Tanchuma. So He desired that the essence of His Ein Sof light be revealed as it is, without veil or concealment amid the lower creation. Our sages use the word abode or dwelling place. In Hebrew, it's dira. Dira means a place where you live. To describe such revelation, just as a man's home serves as an abode for his essence, so too in this world is this world intended to be an abode for God's essence. The Alter Rebbe now goes on to explain the phrase the lower realms. What does it mean? What is it in the lower realms mentioned above? He shows that this refers specifically to our physical world. The explanation in brief is that the terms higher and lower realms do not denote degrees of respective importance in the sight of God or of closeness to Him. In God's eyes, all the worlds, from the highest to the lowest, are equally insignificant. All are equally remote from Him. On the other end, He fills the lower, the lowest world just as he fills the highest. Thus, the term higher and lower must be understood as a standard of comparison within the numerous world. They indicate to what degree godliness is revealed in each individual world. The more revelation, the higher the world. The more obscurity and concealment, the lower, from this standpoint, our physical world, uh, so the, the, from this standpoint, I, our physical world is the very lowest. Why? For here, godliness is most veiled and concealed. So, in the Alter Rebbe's words, says the Alter Rebbe, But truly before God, in His sight, the distinction of higher and lower is not valid. One world is no higher than another. Why? For He pervades all worlds equally. What then do our sages mean by saying that God desire an abode in in, in the the lower realm? So we need to understand what does it mean higher and lower when we're talking about Godliness. First, obviously, we're not talking about physical spaces, but even in, in physical spaces, there's no God is beyond space. And just like a, a concept, an idea is not connected to space. You say one plus one equals two. Where does this idea exist? are connected to a space that's beyond space. Certainly God is beyond space. But even the spiritual concept of higher and lower, when you talk about uh, two people, you can say who is higher and who is lower. You can, you can determine this in terms of uh, intellectual capacity. This person, he's smart, he's not so smart. 
he's higher, he's lower. But when it comes to, to God, there is no such thing. Because by God, the higher and the lower is equally non-existence. God's existence is everything. And this we explained in a very deep, uh, in a very deep way, what the Alter Rebbe says, that God is everything and everywhere. And is beyond time, is beyond space. And even though he created the world, he still is the one and only before creation and after creation. It's only in our perspective that we exist. So therefore, higher and lower, by, when you're talking about their ultimate level in God, compared to God himself, that thing does not exist, higher and lower. But what does it mean, higher and lower, and that God desired to have a, an abode in the lowest place? So the higher and lower is, 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 is from our perspective how much of godliness is revealed to us. This, you have different levels, which comes according to the concealment of godliness. In each world, there is le- more and more concealment. The lower the world is, the more concealed the godliness is. So this is what the, the Alter Rebbe explains. Rabbi Yurin, and the explanation of the matter, however, is that God desired an abode in that realm considered lower within the ranks of the world as follows. Before the world, any world was created, there was only He alone one and unique, filling all the space in which he created the world. Obviously, we're not talking about physical space, the concept of space. Anything that could be conceived of as, uh, could speak, conceived of as a space or possibility for creation was filled with the Ein Sof light. And not only was it then, but as far as God is concerned, it's the same thing now, even after the world was created. In his view, indeed, it is still the same now. Creation wrought no change in his unity. He is one alone now, just as he was prior to creation. The change applies only to the recipient of his vivifying force and his light. Before creation, there was none to receive the divine life force and light. Creation brought into being these recipients. So from our perspective, we are recipients of God's light. And the question is, how much do we receive? That depends how concealed the light is. So the creations who receive this life force and light by way of numerous garments, which veil and conceal God's light. For without such garments, they could not bear its intensity, it would cease to exist. So it is written, for no man can see me and live. Moses, Moses asked God to see, to see God. And Hashem said to him, you cannot see me and live. There is another interpretation in this verse when it says, No man can see me and live. The word vachai means and live. Vachai can also mean and chai, and a living creature. What is this saying? Our Sidis tell us that this verse also means that a man cannot see me. And no living creature, animal, can see me. 
what kind of animal uh, is this talking about? It's talking about those great angels who are referred to as the holy animals. That's what he says. Furthermore, not only man, a physical being, but even a spiritual being, such as angels, are unable to receive the divine light and life force without concealing garments. And as our rabbis of blessed memory interpreted the word vachai and live, this verse as referring to the angel, thus even angels called chayos, the holy chayos, cannot see godliness except by way of garments which conceal him thereby enabling them to receive his light. So now the degree of concealment varies. However, from world to world and from level to level. Here the distinction between higher and lower realms becomes valid as the Alter Rebbe continues. This concealment is the subject of the Hishtalshalus, the chain like graded and downward succession of the worlds and their descent from level to level. Just like a, a, a chain, the chain that has uh, rings that links, that is linked one to another, the higher worlds and the lower worlds descends through the filtering and the lower part of the higher world is the source of the higher part of the lower worlds. And the more concealment, the less godliness is seen. Through the many garments that conceal the light and life force emanating from him, the more concealment, the lower the descent. Culminating in the creation of this physical gross world. That our physical world is the lowest world in that in this in a sense, a spiritual thing is something that has some kind of godly revelation to different degrees. When you look at the sunlight, you know that there is a sun. But when you look at a tree, you don't know that there is a God that created the tree. You don't see it. The physical material world is concealed completely. The godliness is completely concealed. Not only that, you can even have people who go against God and they totally deny God. You have atheists who don't believe in God. And this is a, something that, that comes as a result of such concealment that God conceals himself from us. And this world is the lowest in degree. There is none lower than it in terms of concealment of his light. And no world compares with it. For a doubled and redoubled darkness, nowhere is God's light as hidden as in this world. And it is hidden so much so, so much so that it is filled with the clip with clippers, shells, and sitra achra, the other side, the unholy side which actually oppose God, saying, I am, and there is nothing else besides me. It is thus clear that the term lower realms refers to this physical world, the very lowest in degree of divine revelation. So that is the purpose of creating this world. Hashem created this physical world 
the lowest world, a world that God is completely concealed, and he wants us to find him. He wants us to praise him, to reveal and to contemplate in godliness, to do mitzvahs with physical things. There is the story of the Baal Shem Tov, founder of the Hasidus, before he was revealed as a tzaddik, as a holy man, and revealing his teaching, he used to go around in different villages and, 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 and shtetlach, uh, towns and villages, and he used to encourage people about uh, connecting to God and so on, and uh, telling them stories. And, and he came to one town, and there was a very old Jew sitting in the synagogue, a, they called him a parush. A parush means one who is completely separated from worldly things. He would study Torah all day long, pray all day long in the synagogue, wearing his tefillin and talus all day long, and um, eat very little. Completely um, an elevated person, separated from this world. The Baal Shem Tov walked in and walked over to him and says, Hello to him and says, How are you? How are you doing? How is life? Different things about his health and so on. And, and he's like, He didn't speak to nobody. He was constantly concentrated in studying Torah. He, needs, he didn't answer, he ignored him. Now, the Baal Shem Tov kept asking to the point that he got a little frustrated. And then he put him, he showed him, he motioned with his hand, Move, go out, go away. So the Baal Shem Tov says to him, why do you deny God his sustenance, his parnasa? And that got his attention. And he's like, what do you mean? Denying God is parnasa, God needs sustenance. I can deny God his sustenance. So he told him, yes, God needs his sustenance from us. God wants his, his sustenance from us. It says, V'ato Kodesh, Yeshev Tehilis Israel. You are holy. You are sitting on the praise of Israel. They used to say the word of sitting means what is your sustenance, what is your parnasse, what is your livelihood. You're sitting and doing this. I'm a carpenter and this and that. What is Hashem sitting on? What is God sitting on? Tehillah is Israel. Yeshev Tehillah is Israel. He is sitting. Hashem is sitting on the praise of Israel. And when I ask you, how are you doing? How is your material world? How is your physical life? And you say, Baruch Hashem, thank God. That is the parnasa of Hashem. This is what Hashem desires. And that's the takeaway. We shouldn't think, oh, we'll live in such a low world on the contrary the fact that we live in a low world means that we can make an abode for hashem right where we are have a wonderful day Mitzvah Hashem. we'll see you tomorrow all the best